Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. Today we shall be looking at yet another question on Stecco theorem. It's a Y question 2012 where we are required to find the value of angle STU which is labeled as angle M. Then we are being given the various angles such as RVU which is given as 100 degree and we equally have uh, SRU which is given as 36 degree. These are some of the ways through which we can approach this particular question. There are some theorems that comes to mind on how to get the solution of angle M as we have it in the diagram. Just like I said earlier on, we are being given angle R, V, U, which is 100 degree, and we probably have a S, R, U, which is given as 36 degree. And we are required to find angle S, T, U, which is given as M degree. So, some of the theorems we need to get acquainted with are as follows. Recall the cyclic quadrilateral theorem, a situation whereby you have a quadrilateral inside a circle. When you have quadrilateral inside a circle, it is called cyclic quadrilateral. Cyclic quadrilateral, the theorem says that the opposite angles are supplementary. That is to say, the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degree. For instance, if what we have here is 120, the angle that we should have here should be what? 60. Because when you say 120 plus 60, that will give us 180 degree. That's why we say the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to what? 180 degree. And that is exactly what we mean by supplementary angle. When do we call a particular quadrilateral inside a circle a cyclic quadrilateral? We call quadrilateral inside a circle a cyclic quadrilateral when you have a quadrilateral in the sense that the four vertices, when I say vertices, I mean the sharp point of that quadrilateral. Remember that quadrilateral has to do with a plane shape with four sides. So these are the vertices of this quadrilateral, the sharp point. If the four sharp points of the quadrilateral inside a circle touches the circumference, when the four of them touches the circumference, that is when you call it a cyclic quadrilateral. If you have 100 degree here, this is the opposite of this particular 100 degree of the angle in a cyclic quadrilateral. What do you think we should be having here? Of course, the value of the angle here should be 80 degree because when we add up the two opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, they should be able to give us 180 degree. Then what is not a cyclic quadrilateral? That is exactly what I'm about to show you now. Not every quadrilateral inside a circle can be termed as cyclic quadrilateral. If you have something like this, for example, you have something like this. This is a quadrilateral inside a circle. But can we call this a cyclic quadrilateral? No, we can't call it a cyclic quadrilateral. And what is the reason? The reason being that the four vertices of this quadrilateral is not touching the circumference. As you can see here, this one is touching the circumference, this one is touching the circumference, and this one is touching. Then this one is not touching the circumference. That makes it not a cyclic quadrilateral. I hope this is quite clear. Then another important theorem that we have to look at before solving this question is the one we called the alternate segment theorem. What is the theorem talking about? The line that we have here, assuming this is the center of the circle, the line that we have here, let's call it AB, is known as a chord. Chord is a line segment joining any two points on the circumference we call it a chord 
All right, so assuming I have a line like this, let me call it CD. The line CD is known as a tangent. Why do we call it a tangent? Whenever a line touches a circle at a point of contact, like this one, touches a circle at a point of contact, that line is said to be a tangent to the circle. I hope it's clear. Then again, if I develop an outline here, form another shape, interesting enough, if, for example, I have an angle here called angle A, this angle A is the angle between this tangent and this chord, because this one is another chord also. This is another chord. This is another chord as well. So let's call this one E. We are getting to the root of solving this question, so you have to pay attention to be able to understand the theorem itself. This is exactly what we we'll call the alternate segment theorem. And what is the theorem talking about? That the angle between the tangent of a circle and a chord, you can see this is the tangent, this is the chord. The angle between this tangent and the chord here is equal to the angle subtended by that same chord at the other side of the segment. Assuming I have this place as B. So I can say that A is equal to B. That's what we call alternate segment theorem. To explain that more, if I have the circle this way, I have my ta tangent as this, then if I have a line going this way, another line this way, then another line here. And I have an angle here. Remember, from here to here is called chord. This line is called a chord. And this one is called tangent. So the angle between this tangent and this chord is equal to the angle subtended by that chord at a point of contact here at the other segment. That is to say, the angle we have here, let's call it angle A, is equal to angle B. Assuming I have this place to be C and this place to be D, what can we say C is equal to? Of course, the angle between this tangent and this very chord here, as you can see, is equal to the angle subtended by that chord at the other segment. That is to say C is equal to D, as you can see from this particular theorem. So let's get started. So our aim here is to find angle M. So what is the first thing for us to do? Let's look at this diagram critically and see what if we have a cyclic quadrature. Can you see a cyclic quadrature here? Of course, yes. It have R, V, U, S. This is a quadrature. So we can call it a cyclic quadrature. So since we have 100 here, this is the opposite angle of this cyclic quadrature. So, and we said that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrature is equal to, add up to 180 degree. So therefore, if we have 100 here, what do you think we should have here? That will be 180 minus 100. Of course, what we are going to have here will be what? 80 degree. Oh, this is getting interesting. None that we have here. Do you still remember what we said concerning the angle? This is a tangent. Can you still remember what we said about the angle between a tangent and the chord of a circle, of which this is a chord? This is a chord. So the angle between this tangent and the chord of a circle is equal to the angle subtended by that chord at the other segment. So we can say that that is, is the same thing as what I have here. 
this is part of this degree. Wow, that's getting interesting. That's getting interesting. So how do I get to know the value of this? Remember, as you can see here, S U T is a triangle. I know this part of this triangle. I should be able to know this part of the triangle. If I can know this part of the triangle, then to get this one will be quite easier for me. So can you still recall what we call an angle that looks like this? Assuming I have something like this and I have it here. Can I possibly get this one? Of course, we call it angle on a straight line. Angle formed on a straight line will always give us 180 degree because it gives us a semicircle. As you can see here, this angle on a straight line, you can always have it in different forms. This angle on a straight line, the angle here plus angle here will give us 180 degree. Just like your, uh, the shape of your protractor in the math step, it ranges from zero to 180. So any angle that is formed on a straight line will always give us 180 degree. Now let's get the solution to this. So the angle between this 80 degree and this place is known as angle 180 degree. That is angle on a straight line. Assuming I should call the angle from here to here, angle Y. Then I have to correspond it with that of 80. That will now be 80 plus Y equal to 180 degree because it is angle on a straight line. So I will simply say Y plus 80 is equal to 180. Why do I say so? Because this is angle on a straight line. And angle on a straight line is equal to 180 degree. So Y is equal to 180 minus 80 degree. So Y is now equal to 100 degree. So what I should have here will be 100 degree. As you can see, this will be 100 degree. So as I have it now as a triangle, which now look quite like this, that means I have here as 36, I have here as 100, then I'm looking for M, as you can see from the diagram here. So I can easily get my M. How do I get it? That's sum of angles in a triangle, which is equal to 180 degree. That will now be M plus 100 plus 36 is equal to 180 degree. That's sum of the interior angles of a triangle. Then M plus, that will be 136 is equal to 180. Then M is now equal to 180 minus 136. What will then be the solution? M will be equal to 44 degree. That's our answer. I hope this is quite clear. If you like the video, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Thank you and have a nice day.